Today, I want to talk about how the shorts likely escaped the threshold list back in September. You may have seen that Bitpanda are the latest crypto exchange flogging AMC tokenized securities. And I want to explain how they were used as like for like securities to close out of those AMC FTDs. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So, Samuel Clemens tweeted saying Bitpanda have just come out with a similar product as FTX. They just created this same product today for over 200 stocks, ETFs and commodities. But actually that's not all, they've been creating these AMC tokenized securities a few times over the last few months. But first, let's go through this documentation from Bitpanda. So they've created a new product titled AMC Entertainment Holdings Class A Tokenized Securities. So it says this product is an over-the-counter derivative that enables, and here's the important part, direct and one-to-one -one participation in the following underlying asset, AMC Entertainment. So it's not indirect participation, this is actually direct and one-to-one -one participation or representation. Now it does say, however, we emphasize that at no point will you hold real AMC shares themselves. In particular, this means at no point will you have any voting rights in relation to the share, but they don't specifically mention if there's any entities out there that are holding the real underlying share themselves. They say you specifically don't hold the shares, but it doesn't specifically address whether they hold shares on a one-to-one -one basis. You'd expect they would do or they should do for direct and one-to-one -one participation, but it doesn't specify it on this documentation. But as I've said, they've actually created these tokenized securities multiple times in the last few months. They created batch one, one week after the reverse split. They created batch two, one week after that, and they created batch three yesterday. You can see batch one was created on the 30th of August, 2023, titled AMC Entertainment Class A Tokens. Batch two on the 5th of September, AMC Preferred Equity Tokens. And batch three recently on the 13th of November, aka yesterday or the day before, titled again AMC Entertainment Holdings Class A Tokens. So that's potentially on its own, the float created three times over on supposedly direct and one-to-one -one participation shares or tokens. Now, as Samuel added, he said this all makes sense as to why AMC was removed from the threshold securities list, because the token was created just a few days before. Obviously in August, FDDs accounted for roughly 70% of AMC's trading volume, but in September that percentage fell to just 2% because on the 30th of August, aka a few days before September, those tokens from Bitpanda were originally created. And that's why Biotech Moose has added saying we need to file a Freedom of Information Act request regarding Bitpanda and or Seed & Co to verify that AMC shares were purchased and held on a one-to-one -one basis. Now, I also wanted to recap today's trade from the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group, and it was actually one of our very first losses. But I think this is really important because we managed to keep that loss contained to only 5 or 10%. When we can let our winners run 30, 40, 50, 80, 100% or even more, and keep our losses contained at 5, 10 or a maximum of 20%, that's a perfect balance because not only are we getting more winners than losers, but we're also keeping our losses contained to just five or 10%. So here we could see the S&P 500 broke its pre-market high, and it then gave us our confirmation, so we jumped into some S&P 500 call options. You could see the move did start continuing up to $451.37, where we sold some of those calls, but then it started moving back inside the Bollinger Bands and then touched that 13 moving average. This is where we bailed out of the rest of the position for a small 5% loss. As I said, perfectly keeping our losses contained, but letting winners from previous days run, which is great. So if you guys want to learn how to let your winners run and how to keep your losses contained, be sure to join the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group linked in the description below, where I've got tons of educational videos. Now, Biotech Moose also added something else that I've been trying to research because I don't know if they've got it 100% correct. By they've, I mean Bitpanda, not Biotech Moose. But he said saying, wow, Bitpanda does not hold AMC as the underlying asset. He said it's using swap contracts to bypass the one-to-one -one real share allocation. 
so it says a synthetic EDF does not hold the underlying stocks that it's designed to track. Instead, it uses derivatives such as swaps, futures, or options. So Biotech Moose is basically saying that these AMC tokenized securities held by Bitpanda may not be holding the real underlying shares themselves, they may just be holding AMC swaps instead. Biotech Moose also added this screenshot from Bitpanda's website on stock prices, saying to follow the movements of your favourite stocks in real time, with an asterisk saying Bitpanda stocks are contracts replicating an underlying stock or ETF. So that basically confirms Bitpanda are holding contracts or derivatives, aka futures, swaps or options, to instead of holding AMC shares on a real one-for-one -one basis, to just hold these swaps and to create AMC tokens in their place. Now the reason why I say I'm not sure Bitpanda have it correct is because of this website. It explains saying certain sub funds adopt an indirect investment policy, also known as synthetic replication by investing in swap transactions. So this website basically confirms what a synthetic ETF actually is, and it's an indirect investment policy by holding swap transactions. Obviously swaps give necessarily indirect exposure. But obviously Bitpanda on their documentation say this product is an over-the-counter derivative that enables direct and one-to-one -one participation. Not indirect participation, but direct participation. So in this documentation, Bitpanda are trying to make out they do hold the shares on a one-to-one -one basis, even though their website says they actually don't do that. Now the reason why I say this is important is because with FTDs from Regulation SHO, if the security is not delivered within 35 days after the trade date, then the broker dealer that sold the security must either borrow securities or close out of the open position by purchasing securities of like kind and quantity. If Bitpanda is saying they hold direct and one-to-one -one participation in AMC Entertainment, these broker-dealers are likely using that as a security of like, kind and quantity. Like, kind and quantity basically means these broker-dealers need to find a security that's on a like-for-like -like basis to close out of their FTD. So they can basically say, well, we can't find any real AMC shares, but we can find this security that's like for like with AMC shares because it has direct and one-to-one -one participation. And what do you have it? There just so seems to be three times the AMC flow of available securities that are like for like. Therefore, we can use these securities to close out of our FTDs because they're like for like or of like kind and quantity. I think as Biotech Moose says, we really need to request a Freedom of Information Act request regarding Bitpanda and or Seed & Co to verify if they do hold any AMC shares and if these market makers are using these tokenized securities to close out of their FTDs on the basis they're like for like or of like kind and quantity. Now, I also saw this really interesting tweet from Gur Gavin saying, just in, Warren Buffett has brought a mysterious stock and he's requesting the permission of the SEC to keep the stock's name and details confidential from the public. Now, Lior has replied saying, is that even possible? And why would the SEC allow that? John has also replied with the answer saying the SEC gave them that same discretion before multiple times on the basis that revealing the position before they were done building it would drive up the value by association. This basically means Warren Buffett has bought a stock that's not crazy huge or doesn't have a crazy huge market cap like Tesla, Microsoft, Nvidia, Meta or any of those other stocks. Warren Buffett is building a position in a stock that isn't huge and he doesn't want people to know about it just yet. Because if Warren Buffett were to announce which stock he's investing into, tons and tons of people would crowd into the trade as well. Now I'm not going to speculate which stock it is, but it really reminds me of the Volkswagen squeeze from 2008. Porsche came out from pretty much behind the covers, announcing they held a huge position in Volkswagen and that had bought up the majority of the shares available in the flow. That obviously really screwed over the short sellers because they all had to rush to the exit door to try and buy up any remaining shares to close out of their short position. I'm excited for Warren Buffett to announce which stock he's building a position in, whether it's a heavily shorted stock, even if it's not AMC or GameStop, if it's Carvana, Coinbase, Affirm, Upstart, or any of those other stocks, and whether it ends up causing a short squeeze. 
As I said, I don't even care if it's not AMC. It would just be really interesting to see what happens if Warren Buffett bought up the majority of a company's flow. And finally, I also saw this really interesting tweet as well from Stock Sense Frank, tweeting about Apollo Strategic Growth Capital, which is a SPAC company. Now, usually I wouldn't care about a SPAC company, but this one is a really, really interesting one. And that's because 385% of the float is held by institutions. Not 50% of the float held by institutions, not 60%, not 70%, not even 100%, but 385% of the float. Now, obviously, I knew there were some synthetic shares out there on many other companies in the market, but I didn't know that institutions could hold 385% of a flow. Especially as a SPAC company, it's not like this company's performed a reverse split because special purpose acquisition companies basically do nothing until they find an acquisition target. But it will be interesting to see, as usual, if this data magically disappears or all of a sudden gets corrected. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.